you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready to keep winning? When I talked to, I think, a lot of you in Philadelphia about two months ago, but the day of, uh, what was it called? Shield. Shale gas outreach. And I said, if they come forward with regulations to frack the Delaware, we are going to shut them down. Remember that? And the whole crowd was saying, shut them down. Well, you shut them down. swarming them with calls, by swarming them with emails, and with the threat that you were going to show up here today and shut them down. I'm not afraid. We have a long way to go, even just in the Delaware. And we have a longer way to go across the country. That's right. We can't go home again. We can do it! Right? I, I'm here. I'm here because I, I couldn't go home. I, I found that after I heard about this proposal, I couldn't be in my own home. The ground was shaking underneath my feet, right? So I went out across the country and I found thousands of people who could not go home. So we won this round right here, right? But we can't go home again until Craig and Julie Soutner can go home. Until, until Calvin Tillman and the people of Fort Worth can go home. Can yeah. 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 Because mic check. <laughs> I keep blowing out the mic. I wonder why that happens. <laughs> because if we're getting fracked, everybody's getting fracked. That's it. And if they're getting fracked, we're getting fracked. And we were not afraid of jail. I know a lot of you were not afraid of jail. I'm, I'm really happy that we don't have to go to jail today. This is much, much better, right? It's a lot less tense. But three days ago, I got a call from a guy named Tim DeChristopher. Yeah, yeah! federal penitentiary on his 30th birthday. He turned 30 in jail three days ago because he wanted to stop an illegal auction of oil and gas leases in Utah. He's in jail for two years. And let me remind you that this hearing, had it gone forward, this vote, had it gone forward, would have been an illegal vote. They were in violation of the National Environmental Policy Act, which states they have to do a cumulative impact study before passing regulations. They were committing an illegal act. They were breaking the law. So if you were looking forward to breaking the law today and you were disappointed, you were on the higher moral ground. You were saying, we will do something so that this law cannot be broken. Not a small law, right? The National Environmental Policy Act. So Tim DeChristopher says to me, I feel really isolated in here. I feel one step behind. I said, well, you were five steps ahead to begin with. And, and he was looking at all the things that have happened. The victory at the Keystone XL. His 30th birthday happened to be the day that we won this. And he was looking at Occupy Wall Street. And he was... I think I said Occupy Wall Street. And, and he said, I feel like we're headed towards something much, much bigger than this. And we are. We are. Was amazing to me. He said, you know that sound when you walk into the opera house and you hear all the violins and everybody tuning up? And everybody's sort of on a little bit of a different note, but they're trying to get to the same note. You know what I mean? All these strands coming together. 
and we're fighting extreme energy, we're fighting fracking, we're fighting Keystone XL, we're fighting mountaintop removal, we're fighting deep water drilling, we're fighting the banks that finance these things. So, we're, we're tuning... We're, we're tuning up this orchestra. And we're going to be here for a really long time, aren't we? And when it comes time, when it comes time to blockade the well sites, we'll blockade the well sites. It's too important. So I just want <laughs> maybe tomorrow or next week. But what I want to say is thank you so much for everything that you do. And I hope you enjoy Thanksgiving. We're gonna have the best Thanksgiving in my house in Pennsylvania in years. But then I want you to help us deliver water to Dimmick on the 28th, or whatever day they decide it's going to happen. The Pennsylvania DEP took away their water for no reason. For no reason. They threatened, they threatened Craig Soutner with arrest if he continued to call the governor's office. And I'm going to be followed, I'm going to be followed by Wonder Girl and the Incredible Hulk coming up next. And you know who they are. But I do think we ought to call the governor of Pennsylvania right now. What do you think? I'm going to put him on speakerphone. We're going to tell him no fracking way. We're going to tell him we're not afraid of jail. All right, here we go. Can you hear that? Yeah. Ask him how he'd like jail. Lunch break, coffee break, you know. He's out hunting for turkey. Oh, is that right, There's nobody in the office. Now they all fire and water. He's got to figure out how to stop us again. Oh, man, this, this is an indictment all, all its own. Yes, it is. They're not even answering. I, I swear, this worked right before I came on stage. So did the mic. Okay, well, I think that says it all, doesn't it? There's nobody home in the Pennsylvania governor's office. There's nobody there. So I think we're going to have to remind him of our presence over and over and over and over again. Unbelievable. Thank you.